We're just gonna be mixing this to a nice shaggy lump. We're not looking to develop any dough. I'm just gonna spread out my starter and begin mixing. But before I do that, I just want you to take a look at this dough so you can see how much has changed just in the two hours that it sat. Remember, this is without any additional mixing. Not bad. All right, so we're gonna spread this out. I like to dimple it in just to get it a little bit more worked into the matrix of the dough. All right, now we can begin. Once I get everything fairly incorporated, I begin this scooping mixing method. And this mimics the action of a diving arm mixer. I know it may not look like it's all that effective, but in reality, it's working the entire batch of dough and it'll start to incorporate air with each one of these slaps. It incorporates air into the dough and you can get a very nice extensible dough with this mixing method. It's clean, it's easy, it's gentle on the dough. It's not loud and obnoxious like slap and fold, doesn't fling dough all over the place. It's very relaxing, enjoyable. And I usually do this for maybe five to 10 minutes. Then I'll take a break, let it sit for another 10, 15 minutes and come back for another five minutes of mixing at the end. So really you're only looking at 10 to 15 actual minutes of mix time. The whole process takes me about a half an hour. If I'm in a rush, I just skip it. 10 minutes and then I'm done. You can see the dough is already starting to develop. It feels nice in my hands. You can see it's, it's a very wet dough. And people are intimidated by wet doughs, especially when it comes to hand mixing. As you can see, it couldn't be easier. All right, it's been about five minutes or so. You can hear the sound that the dough is making as I mix it. It's making those gluten bubbles, which means the dough is developing quite well. You can see it's much different in consistency than it was at the start. Real nice. So now that it's starting to develop, I'm just going to take a break for 10 or 15 minutes, let it sit, and we'll return to finish off the mix. It's been about 15 minutes. I'm just going to finish off the mix here. It doesn't take too long five minutes at most. Sometimes I just do it two or three minutes. You can already see how much more developed this dough is. It's cohesive. It wants to stay together. It's not pulling apart. It's not sticking as much. This is gonna be a nice dough. I think this is good enough. Just gonna gather it up and put it into a clean bowl for proofing. Look how nice that dough is. Now I just wanna take a second to talk about folds. In this video, you're gonna see me give the dough a lot of folds. It's not vital. Give it as many folds or as few folds as you want. Don't let it run your day. You're still gonna get good bread. With the folds you see me give it, I might get an extra 10 to 15% oven spring. But once again, you're still gonna get good bread even if you don't fold your dough at all. Grab it with a wet hand, stretch it, fold it over. Let's 
see how nice that dough is already. It's only gonna get better. And just tighten it up. I'm gonna show you how I get wet dough out of a non-oiled bowl. No flour, no problem. Wet hand, turn it just like you normally would. This helps release the dough from the sides of the bowl. Once it's released, it comes right out. With your wet hand still, pre-rounded into a nice top pool.